what's up? We here for Founders Conversations. Y'all already know the vibes. It's another day. Another feeling good day. We got a special guest in the building today, Miss Lily Lyons from SWV. Um, I need you guys to share this live and let's get her on in the building. If we're going to get this interview started. What's up, y'all? We here for Founders Conversations. You know the vibes. And hey, there she is. Hi. Hey, what's up, superstar? Oh, uh, man. Everything and, everything and nothing. <laughs> ah, everything and nothing. Well, Woo. Just How you welcome. doing? I'm feeling great. My name is Jersey. And welcome to Founders Conversations. Um, I am CEO and founder of an academy called Lotus Creations Academy. And we are here in New York City in Brooklyn. I know you're a New York girl. I am, but I'm in Atlanta now, though. I know you're in Atlanta, but I know you're in New day. York all day. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, well, you know, we are here kind of focusing on building the arts. If it, you know, as it, as it focuses on dance, I'm a choreographer and a creative director first. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, we have a lot of instructors that come on board that are actors and, and vocalists and and, um, and, and and people that are just aspiring to be successful in the performing arts. So hence why we have you, a living legend, um, and we want to have someone come on the show and literally talk to us about the ins and outs of the music industry and your legacy that you've left here for us for over a decade. Come on. Oh, my God. I mean, where do I start? Uh, oh, my. Oof. So let's, um, let's, let's kind of get into it. I actually got a series of questions. Um, just to kind of start with. The Hold project. on one second. Yeah, no worries. Welcome, y'all. So, if y'all just tuning in, we are here with Miss Levy Lyons from <clears throat> SWV for Founders Conversations. So, make sure y'all tune in, get y'all questions ready. Uh, we're going to be talking everything entertainment and how to be successful in this industry called entertainment. Uh, so, Lily, kind of start off with your process. Tell us, what did you want to be when you were growing up? You know, I, I definitely didn't want to be in the entertainment. Well, in my younger years, I wanted to be a mortician. Okay. So, I mean, it was like a toss between the two. Um, mortuary science was definitely going to be my um, my plan B, for sure. <laughs> Wait, that's like complete opposite ends of the Yeah, world. complete opposite. Absolutely. But I'm, I'm just like, to this day, I, I love... I don't know if it's, it sounds crazy, crazy, but I, I love the, um, the mortuary business, like the business of death, I guess. Okay. Okay. I, I know it sounds crazy, but you know, it ain't for everybody. That's Listen, what it ain't for everybody, but it is for somebody. Uh, but so you wanted to do that. So then that was your process. When did you say, all right, I'll kind of give music a chance. When did that transformation happen? Well, I mean, music was definitely something that was always in me. My my mom played the piano. I, my brother sang. Um, there was always some kind of music around me. So that was pretty much inevitable. Mm -hmm. um, but the time that I really said to myself that I wanted to be in the entertainment industry was this one time I saw Shanice Wilson on Star Search. You know, singer Shanice Wilson? Of course, of course. And so she was 12 years old, and I saw this young girl with this big voice, and I'm like, wow, you know, she kept winning. And I'm like, geez, man, I can do, I want to do that, I can do that. And it just looked so much fun. Like, she was just having a ball just up there, just kind of expressing herself through song, and I loved it. You know, I never would have thought in a million years that it would eventually turn into something, but it did, and I'm thankful for it, you know. You said never in a million years, you know. You've I mean, you just don't know. Like, there's so many different talented people out there. You just don't know. You know, you everybody is not going to get a shot, and that's the truth. Yeah. I mean, at least at at the mainstream, mm -hmm. you know. So let me ask you this: At what age then did you say, "All right, our break is coming," and I definitely think I'm going to probably abandon the mortuary shit? and actually be like, all right, I'm going to actually pursue this as a career and do music? Um, 
like I said, we had no idea what was going to happen. We were doing <laughs> demos. Our demo eventually got in the hands of an A&R guy at RCA Records at the time. Okay. Um, he didn't like the music that we were doing, but he loved our voices together. So he made us sing something a cappella. He loved us, the way we blended and everything. And um, <laughs> he put us in the studio to record, you know, the songs that he liked, that he thought we should record. And <laughs> we did that, of course. And um, that turned into a record deal. Okay. <clears throat> so our demo deal eventually turned into a recording deal which is awesome. <laughs> All right. So now, how was it for your sisters? Did all of you guys feel at the same time, like, yo, let's really do this? Or were you guys all at different stages in your life and maybe kind of felt like, all right, it's not the right time for me, but it may be for you. Did you guys all feel unanimously the same? You, you mean as far as us making it? Yes. I, in, in terms of going forward with the actual record deal when you guys were younger. Well, we were happy. I mean, we were excited about it. But, you know, it's a lot of people that get signed to a deal, but that don't mean that the, the public is going to like. That's just one stage. Uh -huh. You know, you go, and, and it's actually probably one of the hardest, one of the most complicated stages of, of having somebody believe in you enough to put all of this money up for you and believe in your gift. That's but that's true. just the first stage. The second stage <laughs> is recording the whole product and um, the public liking it. So once we passed that, it was like, oh my God, you know? We, we just couldn't believe it. But the one moment that happened, that when we realized that, um, you know, woo, we probably need a little security now, like things is a little different for us right now. But <laughs> because I used to, you know, I'm from the Bronx, New York, and um, my godmother at the time, she used to, have me do laundry and go food shopping. That was my job forever. So whenever I would go and um, visit her, I always look forward to that list. Now, mind you, we was at the top of our game at this time. So back then they had like the food stamps and the books, the book of food stamps. Oh, I know the food stamps. So my godmother didn't care about the fact that I was on television and everybody I had fans now. Okay. I still had to do laundry and I still had to go shopping with those book of food stamps. And that's what I did. That was my job. So, <laughs> so at that point, when I, when I went over there to do that and the kids were outside, like waiting for, for me to come outside of my building, that's probably the moment when I realized, wow, I am really doing something great. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when your hood appreciates you, Definitely. You understand and you realize, wow, maybe I have made it I'm because I'm doing something good, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the hood definitely, come on, you guys came out with such a big, with such a big smash and you guys were, were able to sustain for literally two decades. Even two yeah, years. yeah. It, it's been, it hasn't been easy, but it, it's been a blessing for sure. So I want to kind of get back, bring it back to the beginning for us. How did SWB actually come about? Oh, my God. I hate this question. Oh, boy. Why you hate the question? Before you actually answer the question, why you hate the question? Because it's so old. Like, we've been out 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody had 30 years to, to, to figure out that. To figure out how that, okay. Well, okay. I right, give us the clip well, notes I, version. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say it really fast. Um. I'm going to give you the short, quick version. Okay, okay. Um, it was my vision to actually want to start a girls group and put a girls group together. Um, I, I pulled Coco in. Coco pulled Taj in, and that's how SWB was born. It, it wasn't no crazy, crazy story. It was just a little girl from the Bronx, New York, who, who had the gift of song and wanted to share it. And I had a friend who was a little bit older, who was a few years older than me, named Coco Cheryl Gamble. And she could sing. And I just went up to her and said, yo, I want you, I want to sing. Like, I want you to be in my group or whatever. And then she's like, yeah, whatever, you know. When, whenever you're serious, then call me, because nobody took me serious back then, right? <laughs> so that's how it all came together. I mean, it's, it's always a backstory that's really complicated, but in a nutshell, that's exactly how everything just kind of came into fruition. 
okay. as far as the three of us getting together. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, so you was kind of like pulling the strings a little bit. Like, I think I want to really get this. Girl. Well, what well, a vision, you know, I've always been a visionary. Got you. I've always been a visionary. And I, you know, a lot of people do. Like, you just, you go through some things in your life and you come from a certain uh, neighborhood and you realize mm -hmm. that, wow, maybe there's something better out there that I can do. You know, in, in an effort to kind of run from your current situation. Mm -hmm. And music was that thing for me. Music was that thing for me that kind of kept me, um, kept me together. Gotcha. You know, whenever I would do something crazy or think of something crazy, um, music would definitely distract me from everything. It would put me in a, in a very comfortable place. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, heard, I heard you actually on an on a actual interview and I heard you say, that you are of the industry, but you're not really of the industry. Yeah. I definitely can see that it's, music is in your soul and it's in your blood, you understand? Mm -hmm. You know, the industry is not necessarily what music is, you understand? Yeah. So mm -hmm. talk to us about that. You know, how did you navigate through just kind of really finding your voice as an artist and really staying out of all the craziness that the industry actually was throwing your way? Ooh. I just think just kind of attaching yourself to the gift, to the music itself. I mean, wherever you go, it's always a bunch of chaos going on around you. But mm -hmm. if it's not in you before you get in the industry, it shouldn't be you when you get in the industry. I got you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So a lot of stuff that happens, yeah, you know, you have the peer pressure thing and, and you meet big stars and the big stars are doing some crazy things nowadays, you know? Mm -hmm. so. You know, it's always that sense of wanting to be a part of something. And sometimes we don't choose to be a part of the right things. Absolutely. And I just happen to be one of those kids who grew up around a bunch of alcoholics. So liquor was never my thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was the kid that, you know, that jumped in front of knives and guns and mm -hmm. to stop adults from fighting and killing each other from hit, from uh, drinking 150 proof vodka. So um, it's just never been my thing. You know, mm -hmm. I, I just never attach myself to the bottle um, and, and drugs. It's just, I was always afraid that I would be that girl that would, um, <laughs> that you would see walking down the street naked thinking the buildings are falling on me. You know, <laughs> So it was that thing that just kind of kept me Focus now. I'm not saying I didn't do some things, but it that wasn't my thing. Gotcha. gotcha. You know, so I'm free of the drugs and alcohol, you know, and, and out of fear. Like today, to this day, they make fun of me because they like, well, just have one drink. No, that's how it starts. I have friends that had one drink and now yeah. they can't take the bottle out their mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I mean, well, yeah, I don't, I don't knock time. anybody who have a, who enjoy a little taste every now and then. And my, as my mom used to say, a little taste, mm -hmm. you know, so I mean, but just be responsible in whatever you do. That That's it. You know, it's, it's all about doing things in portions and you don't want to definitely be that girl that wake up the next day with her her skirt down and don't know what the hell happened. You know what I mean? And I never wanted to be that. Most definitely. So, yeah. you, so what would be your advice to give to people that want to pursue music career and that understand that, you know, in 2020, Temptations coming down a dozen, you know, out here, even, even, if, even though it, it was the same thing back in the day, but now there's social media, mm -hmm. which is now a gift and a curse because everything you do would now come to light, whereas back in the day, it wasn't no social media like that. So what you did was for you and what you did. You understand? So what would be advice to, you know, people that have these demons that they have to battle and now there's social media and, you know, there's really no cleaning it up once it out, once it's out there? Well, one thing I would say to a lot of aspiring singers and, and people who just aspire to be in the entertainment industry as a whole, <laughs> And I said this the other day to a young lady who has a, a, one of the most amazing voices. Mm. Mainstream is not for everybody. Everybody is not going to make it to mainstream. But that does not mean that your gift is watered down. Everybody want to focus on the whole mainstream side of things when there's a whole other world out there full of music lovers that's underground. Absolutely. And to me... Mainstream is the hardest place to stay. I would rather have 
a hundred thousand loyal followers, people who really tune into what I'm doing and we connect in, in a way that nobody can disconnect us, then go mainstream. Cause as soon as that light dims for you in mainstream, they are gonna go on to the next person. So they only stay around a little bit, you know what I mean? So I wanna just encourage a lot of the different artists out there just explore your gift. Get to know the music business and understand that everybody's not going to get to Beyonce's level. Mm -hmm. Everybody's not going to get to Rihanna's level. It's just not going to happen. Okay. It, 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 this thing is like the lottery. Okay, gotcha. You. you know what I'm saying? Everybody is not going to get that shot at gotcha. mainstream. But that don't mean that you're any less talented than a Beyonce or Rihanna. It does not mean that. And a lot of people I talk to, they get so discouraged because they want to get to the top. You know what I mean? And, and of course, that should definitely be your goal. But your top may be right here. Absolutely. And not right here. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So don't feel like your gift is watered down just because, you know, you're not um, mainstream and the majors are not checking for you because let me tell you something. I was signed to a major label and everything comes with a price. Mm -hmm. Everything is not always what it seems. Believe that. Sometimes you may have to be the dopest singer in your community. Sometimes you may have to be the dopest singer in your church. Mm -hmm. As long as you have people that support you and appreciate you, then, then you're good. You you are so, you just as much of a superstar than the Beyonce and the Rihanna and the SWV for that matter. <laughs> you know, so don't feel like your gift is watered down. Just keep going, just keep going because when it don't happen for you, a lot of people just kind of take that personally, and then they start doubting themselves. They don't believe in themselves anymore, and that is so far from the truth, man. I, I hear some amazing singers. <laughs> So let me ask you this, Lily. Uh -huh. um, how important is the look? How important is the full package? I'm a creative director. I'm a visionary. Uh -huh. I'm a choreographer. Thank you. you know, so, you know, when I, when I think about a, a modern day artist, if you don't come with the full package, you got to know how to sing. You got to know how to move a little bit. You got to know how to play to that camera. If the camera doesn't love you, you're not able to produce content that is just past the vocals, right? Mm -hmm. um, how serious and how important is that in order to make it to the superstar level, right? Talk about that a little bit. This is where it gets complicated because um, I don't feel like there's a package. And one artist to this day who really exemplifies everything that you're saying right now is her. Definitely. She came out as a complete mystery because she got so sick of people telling her what she should look like. Oh, you have nice boobs. You need to do this. Oh, you have beautiful hair. You need to look like this. But that's not what I'm about. I'm a, I'm a musician. I play over five instruments and I can sing. And I have something that I want to present to the world that's authentic. That's me. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe you have to put on a leotard and a bustier and all of that stuff. That's how we're brainwashed. Our community is so brainwashed because we have these, these, um, I'm trying to find a nice way to say it, you know, these, these homeboy executives who don't know what the hell they're doing. You know, a lot of these guys get on because they friends are, have, have very um, popular positions in, in the music industry and they don't know what they're doing. They just came out of jail. So they put in a position of, of A&R or whatever it is that they're doing. They don't know what an artist should look like. And I don't think that's for everybody. And I'm not knocking that artist who want to be sexy, but as long as that's you, mm -hmm. then I say, go for it. If you're the type of person that like to wear sweatpants and a t-shirt, go on stage with sweatpants and a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you have to be comfortable within yourself. Okay, okay. okay. It ain't about taking off your clothes. It's about the music. And that's why... We need to get back there. Yeah, you have the Supremes and everything, and they were cute at what they did. They had a whole system going on back in the Motown days, and that actually worked for them. But that's everybody is not a Supreme. You have some singers who don't want to wear a dress, and they should be able 
to go on stage anywhere they want to. As long as they have that gift and as long as they pick up their guitar and play, real music lovers connect with the music. It doesn't matter. You could turn the lights off and if you hear a chord, somebody play a few chords on a guitar, you feel that. <laughs> It ain't about what you wear and what you look like. Of course, that's a plus one, but it, it's not, it, it doesn't matter because everybody don't look the same. You should be able to go on. If you a nice looking guy with dreads, if you a pretty chocolate girl with, with short hair, you should be accepted just as much. You know what I mean? You don't have to look like light skin, long hair. I mean, it, it's not about that. It shouldn't, and we need to get away from that because we're so brainwashed with everything that's going on today, everything um, have to be a certain look or have to look a certain way. And we're running away from what's important, and that's the music. Absolutely. It's the love for the music that really got us on the phone, right? Got us on this interview right now. Mm. So we can't forget that mm. once we get in. Mm. We can't uh. allow these executives who don't know shit. And I'm going to just be real with you. I'm sorry, baby. Listen, they, so they don't know too much of nothing. They don't, they don't know too much of nothing. And you don't allow them. Don't, make, don't allow them to change who you are. Because people can see through the fake. You go on stage. You go prepared. And you go and, and show your gift. And I'm telling you, people going to connect with you. If they connect with you, that's great. If they don't, it's, it's great, too. Mm -hmm. as long as you did well, however many minutes you have on that stage as long as you believed in those moments mm -hmm. hey man it's all good <laughs> absolutely listen we here for Founders Conversations y'all and Lily is breaking it down alright she's giving y'all <laughs> the real and if you really got the vocals and it's all about the music that's really what it should all be mm -hmm. music no gimmicks no you know no exteriors just literally pure soul and just singing because yeah. I always I always tell people, and I look, you know, I'm a music lover, so I study a lot of musicians. I'm like, you know, I see these little competition things and who's better, uh, J-Lo or Beyonce? Who's better, SWV or Escape? Like, mm. who the hell cares? Like, why does it, why is that a big deal? Mm. Who cares? We, we all do our thing. We all do our thing differently. But the bottom line is, I want to see, the only way you can impress me is if you go on the stage and you can rock out without all the props. If you ain't got all those props, the stage show and the beautiful lights and everything, impress me that way. Oh, oh. <laughs> but, but wait, Lily, but wait. Every artist now is necessarily a vocalist, right? There are some artists that are just performers. Right, like, like, like. Let's talk about the great, the great Janet Jackson. She might necessarily not be a vocalist per se, but she, she, we, we tune in for Janet because she can perform and she dances and she gives us the theatrics. So there is, there is like a line that goes between a vocalist and I guess a performer because they give us two different. I see you ready, ready to tell me, but I, they give us two <laughs> different feels. But talk yeah, to you about yeah. that. I understand what you're saying, I, and I think that's just a matter of whose ear is listening. You know what I'm saying? We are programmed, like I said, if you, we, we, in our community, we have been used to hearing like great singers. That's just who we are from slavery days. Like those slaves have beautiful voices. And now, you know, with the whole church thing, uh, you got these really great sopranos that sing really loud. And to us, you're not singing if you're not doing that. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't agree with that. I, I do believe that there are some singers who they just have different, they do things their own way. Yes, Janet is like the ultimate entertainer. Maybe she, she might not be as consistent vocally as a lot of these other singers, and that's okay. But she could definitely stand on the same stage as a lot of them singers. Absolutely. And that's the bottom line. The key to the music business is I don't care how good you can sing. I don't care how bad you can sing. But mm. can you make a good record? Absolutely. That's all it boils down to. Mm. If you can go in the studio and produce a great record, because a lot of your great singers, mm. ain't nobody buying their records. They good enough for a like on YouTube mm -hmm. or a share. But how do that translate into dollars? Absolutely. So now, let me ask you this. Do you feel that 
the industry is now not so much based on talent and more so based on followers and popularity and maybe what an image looks like? Do you feel like there was a switch from maybe when you started out to what it is now? Oh, absolutely. Like, it's so different now. Now uh, people have more access to you than ever. Back in the day, when we came out in the early 90s, people had to literally find you and get an interview. Like, it wouldn't be this easy. Like, I would have to meet up with you and you would have to meet up with me. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then that's how it was back then. But everybody has so much. They have so many options now. So that's what it is. It's not that you know, um, one artist is better than the other artist, but I think we just so consumed with these celebrities, mm -hmm. it just makes me sick. It, it really does. I, I never really looked at myself as a celebrity because I've, I've always been disconnected from the industry in that way, but I just think we so consumed with how everybody else is living, how many jet skis Puff Daddy is, is by, and then his why? Why are we spending so much time wanting somebody else's life when mm -hmm. we and then we don't even have enough time to figure out what we want to do with our own? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it, it just makes me sick. But it's so different now in that aspect. I mean, I don't desire to have somebody else's life. Even I, I've rubbed shoulders with a lot of these big time celebrities, but nobody impressed me. Mm -hmm. You know who impressed me? Smokey Robinson. Hey. Uh, um, people like that. Um, Maya Angelou impresses me. People who have been through the dirt and came up some kind of way. I don't care about nobody who don't have a story. If you have a story that you can tell me where you can inspire me at 47 years old, oh my God. Like, you my hero. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So... That's what it's all about at the end of the day. I think we all have um, our own level of talent, whether mm -hmm. you're an interviewer or you're trying to uh, uh, build your own magazine and whatever mm -hmm. your platform is, spend as much time doing that and working on that than you are online trying to figure out and, and, and try to want somebody else's life. I, I, it makes me so sick to see that. Absolutely. But you know what? That's the social media curse though. Like I said, it could be a gift and a curse. And a lot of people can use it to build businesses and the people that find the time to build it mm -hmm. are not the people that's worrying about envying the other people mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's looking. So that's why I'm saying if you choose to be on the other end of the spectrum, but sometimes it's hard because if you in the, if you in the neighborhood and you, you see a black kid from the hood and you see, you see, uh, you see, you go on your Instagram, you got ladies looking good, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's difficult for someone to not know how to even get there. You understand? So they go and they get themselves into a funk. They just need to know how that they can get to wherever they try to. Yeah, go. yeah, but you don't even have to. It ain't all about, it's levels to this shit. Like, mm -hmm. straight up. Like, you know, I've had the opportunity to be a part of, I'm a part of a great group. We've done some amazing things. And then there's some things that we probably will never do. You know, I mean, we sold over almost 30 million records but you know the industry probably won't ever recognize that because we ain't eating nobody's ass or doing some crazy and i'm sorry like i have to be real because nah, be real, be you real. know everybody just kind of do their thing differently so i just feel like you should just do whatever it is that you desire to do <laughs> and and that's that's what I feel in my heart. You know, it's not about um you want to create a vision for yourself. And there's a there's a um there's a, a scripture in the Bible says where uh without a vision the people perish. Mm -hmm. And I think I don't think a lot of us really pay attention to that. We don't really think about us as much as we aspire to be somebody else in a day. Like, it's okay if you if somebody uh, on your timeline and you look at them for inspiration, yes, be inspired, but don't stay there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I tell people all the time, I have people say, oh, man, I wish I had your car. Like, this is my dream. I say, you can have it. All you got to do is be able to pay a car note. Mm -hmm. I'm, I ain't got no extra stuff that you... So I don't make people think that they can't have certain things. Every day, we are supposed to inspire somebody. I'm not going to make this, this young girl think, I'm going to let her ride, ride in my car. I don't care. 
because I know if I if I miss a damn car note, <laughs> this shit won't be gone anyway. Yeah. You you know what I'm saying? So I I just feel like it's um look look at people for inspiration of sure for for sure, but your date night or your um your mainstream may be and I and I'm kind of ahead of myself because I'm thinking about a time where um I was having a conversation with this young lady and we was talking about dating and they were saying how they wish they could do this and do this do that with their boyfriend but they can't afford it. And I'm like, "Look, do you know what I do for date night? I don't spend no bunch of money. I find a center bistro and we have dinner at the movie and you you that's a beautiful date to me." Yeah. And I'm full. You get in like a first class service. You is a bar in there. If you drink, they bring your food to you. They cater to you. That's that could be a great date night. Mm -hmm. But we have in our head that we have to spend all of this money for what? Why? It ain't nothing nobody is doing that you cannot do. Yeah. So getting back to what you said, it's okay to be inspired by people, but don't stay there. Don't don't be sitting there wanting somebody else's life. It's not, your life is great. And if your life ain't great, then that means you're doing something wrong. You need to make your life great and stop paying attention to all of these celebrities worrying about what jet ski they riding on. Absolutely. <laughs> Lily just broke it down, y'all. Come on, that's what we talk about. So yeah. we're real, we're inspired, not stay there and make some moves, right? So let me ask you this, Lily. What do you think about the state of R and B right now? The state of R and B right now. I'm going to go. Okay. Take your phone. I'm sorry, my no, grand okay. baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was your question? Um, the state of R and B music right now. What's the state of it to you? You know what I feel. Um, I get asked this question a whole lot, and they ask me, you know, is R and B dead? I absolutely will never, ever in a million years say that R and B is dead because it's not. I just feel like people are not falling in love anymore. Like mm. R and B, that true R and B music. I mean, we had Teddy Pendergrass, uh, we had Marvin Gaye. These are people who 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 journey, who showed you the process of of getting into the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Now everything is about is microwaved. We yeah. want to do it in the car. We want to do it in the back of the staircase. We it's no process. How about nobody's even rap rapping or singing about even being mad? So, you know, it's not even, there's not even a process of even, it's all about getting money. It's, it's all about, it's all about getting money. And I would never say R&B is dead, but I love, I'll tell you one group that I love and, and I follow them and I support them all day. Mm -hmm. And I think they have really brought back what R&B sounded like to a lot of us. Um, and that's the Hamiltons. Okay, okay. Amazing. Like, if you want to get back into the instrumentation of things and the musicianship, mm -hmm. they exemplify everything that Marvin Gaye did, Donny Hathaway did, mm -hmm. all of these great artists that we love. They take you right back to that live music, and we need to get back to that. Absolutely. And in order for us to get back to that, we have to support it. We can't get mad and be talking about, oh, this artist's music is whack and all of that stuff. As artists, we don't ever like to put out anything that we feel like our fans won't like. But mm -hmm. you can't, you got to shut up if you don't put up. Absolutely. If you don't support what we're doing, I know my group, we want to hear about this. Like, uh, I like, I would rather a fan say, I'm not really connecting with, um, with number seven through ten, but mm -hmm. I love one through five. <laughs> I I can respect that. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But if you don't support a music and a genre of music that we claim belongs to us, we all need to shut the hell up. Absolutely. Absolutely. We don't support shit. We support garbage. And I hate to say that. I hate oh, to say that in comparison to like the greats 
And, um, and I'm not taking anything from anybody because everybody's artistry is different. You know, you had people talk about sex back in the day, and I, and I love, I come from that era. Uh, Johnny Taylor, when, when they talked about, and Millie Jackson, who was the original Little Kim before Little Kim, but a lot of people will never know because we don't do our homework. Mm -hmm. It is nothing new under the sun, nothing. All your new artists, look, look at Beyonce, she's amazing. I've known Beyonce since she was like 11 years old. I would have never thought she would be the biggest star in the world right now. But there's another part of me who actually saw it. I didn't think it would be this big, but wow. You know what I mean? But, you, but not, you say you But where do you think she got it from? Like, you look at Beyonce and look at Tina Turner. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's our modern day Tina. Hmm. But do you think that it's her work ethic that got her to where it's supposed to be? Absolutely. She knows what the hell she's doing. She knows what she wants. She's hands on with everything, which a lot of artists are not. And then they want to cry and say, you know, they got jerked because you're not, you allowing somebody to pretty much handle all your business. Absolutely. If they sign in your, your name, their name on your behalf, then what do you expect? If shit don't go right, who you going to blame? You got to blame yourself. And we get so consumed with the business part of things, like the stage and the fun part, when really the most important part is the stage, is, is when you get off the stage and, um, and you go in that dressing room and be damn near crying because some shit didn't go right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's ser this is a business. This stuff is serious. People eat from this stuff. Mm -hmm. This stuff put kids through school. And that's why when a lot of these bloggers, I just look at them and, and see how they contribute to the demise of all of these people, man. I'm like, damn, man, you know, this, you don't think about people, kids, like they, it's not just the artist that suffers. Mm. Their kids suffer too. But so we just get so consumed in other people's shit that our stuff just be all over the place. Like we can't even fix, we, we got shit going on in our own house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we put on a smile when we walk out the door, but at the end of the day, shit, somebody might be beating my ass when I get in the house. You know what I mean? But I know how to turn it on and off, even though, thank God, that's not happening. But I'm just saying, like, it's so important that we really treat people how we want to be treated. And we always could laugh. We laugh all day as long as that shit ain't us. We, it's funny. Absolutely. You know so what I'm saying? As, as a black woman in the industry, do you feel like you, you've been in this industry for so long. Do you feel like you had, uh, you know, not like a, a silver spoon, but do you feel like you were given the respect that you deserve as you kind of climbed the way in the industry? Do you feel like you were disrespected as a black woman? Absolutely not. Hmm. No, this business is, is, um, is built on relationships, networking, uh, clout, uh, dick riders, and, you know, um, that's what it's built on. If I'm not sleeping with somebody that's popular, nobody give a shit about me. You know what I'm saying? If I'm not hanging next to somebody that's popular or somebody that can give you the followers that you need, everything is about a picture. <laughs> look, you see it all the time. Look, look at people who take pictures together. That, that ain't by chance. Everybody don't like taking pictures. <laughs> but, they, but they take them goddamn pictures because they know that the person next to them got a whole lot of followers and they just want, it, it looks good. As they say in the industry, it's a good look, you know, but we definitely didn't get the respect we deserve, but we're, we're tired of asking for it now because one thing about SWV, numbers don't lie. Absolutely. Numbers don't lie. We've contributed some great stuff out there to, to music. And nobody can't take us take that away from us. When we first started, um, there were producers saying to other producers, man, don't work with them. They're going to be whack and they on a whack label. So everything was, even back then, was about your affiliation. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, of course it hurts because we want to be loved and respected by our peers. But as adults, we understand how this business works. Everything is political. It's political. So, do you think because you guys remained a group, 
is why it's hard for them to really pay homage because there is something about them the industry respecting groups and you know because everyone breaks up you know there's always someone that becomes the Beyonce of the group or you know whatever the case may be mm -hmm. but there is something about paying homage to groups and you guys literally have stayed together from the beginning all the way up until now well we we had a a, a a moment where we disbanded but I think it was the best thing that that could ever happen to us because we got into this business as young girls as kids and, you know, sometimes when you transition into a grown woman or a young adult, you change. Sometimes you don't vibe with the person as an adult, but as kids, you think as kids, so you do as kids do. Well, you know, you, you go through life and you go through these changes as a woman, for sure. And you start dating certain guys. And we all know some of these guys are just poison. They're very toxic. And as as a young girl, they get into your head and try to make you believe that, you know, you are the sunshine, you know what I'm saying? And nobody else, like you, you've, uh, you've clomped this ladder alone. And that's never, that's never true. Mm -hmm. So I think it was the best thing that could have ever happened to my group was that we separate from each other to come back even stronger. And now we have a bond that is, amazing it, it can't be broken yes do we still have disagreements absolutely but at the end of the day it's about we have a lot of supporters who love us and we can't forget about them in the process of of our mess like we we can't forget about the people who got us here and that's one thing a lot of people forget about we forget about after a certain level of success you just start thinking fans just don't mean shit and I, I, I totally disagree with that because I don't take it lightly that our supporters have got us here and they've kept us here. It's to the point now we can't even make a new record because they don't want to hear that shit. They want to hear weak. I'm so into you <laughs> right here. And I used to be like, damn, why they Well, I don't, know, I don't know if they don't want to hear nothing because somebody actually just dropped in the comments right before when I took it off the screen, it's SWV coming out with any new music. So you can actually go ahead and let us know that while you're on that topic. Well, with SWV, we're working on a lot of different things and just trying to keep it fun. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, we're entertaining a biopic. We'll see what happens with that because we want people yeah. to, to not only be entertained, but we want people to understand that um, life yeah. happens. And, you know, sometimes... You got to make sure that's done right, Lee, that yeah. biopic. Gotta be done oh, right. it got to be, of course, absolutely. So, um, you know, we, we trying to put ourselves in a position where we can bring our true fans into our world and just have a good time because I'm at the point in my life, shit, I'm, I'm almost in the third stage of life, you know, so everything that happens uh, from this point on, it got to be good and it got to be organic. It got to make sense. And that's what it's all about because, you know, Hey, death don't wait for no one. People are getting sick. And if I can encourage a lot of people, any everybody who's watching right now, live your life, man. Live your life and don't keep waiting on people to to validate who you are. Whew, I, I could just stay on this so long. But um, that's the meat of everything that I want to say. Just live your life and, and be delivered from people. Because you keep waiting for people to love on you, honey. You're going to stay disappointed. Hmm. Somebody said, we loved, um, we loved the old gems because it takes us back in time. But we'd love to hear new SWV music. Oh, uh, well, that's good to hear. <laughs> keep telling us. Put it on our page so the girls can hear y'all say that. Definitely. Everybody they ain't going to take my word for it. <laughs> they ready for the SWV uh, biopic. Uh, they said, damn sure will. They ready. They say, okay. They ready for the music, uh, Libby. So definitely talk to the sis and get that's those. A that's okay. beautiful. Thank that's you so much, guys. And if y'all want to dance on the track, y'all hit me. I got y'all in our next music video. You know <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So now let's jump into the next question. You talking real dope. Um, you giving us real straight like you want to hear it. Versus back. Um, I know you mentioned earlier, you know, you, like the, you don't like the competition thing. But what do you think about the versus battle? And would SWV do a versus and with 
Woo. Oh my God. Uh, everybody is, is pushing for it's either SWV and Escape or SWV and TLC. Uh. Um, as far as the versus battle, hey man, we're not going to shy away from anything because at the end of the day, it's all love. We're confident in our catalog. We know we got records. So absolutely, it, it's like, you know, it may be records you don't know, but we got a catalog out there Absolutely. so that we're very proud of. Absolutely. And, um, hey, man, you know, we, we they've been trying to get it cracking. But at this point, you know, we're not going to be that group where everybody make money but us. So this is business all day, every day. <laughs> Straight up. So it will be fun. But, you know, if, if they come correct, then we can work something out on the business end. Hey, man, that'll be great. I, I would love to do it. Absolutely. I would love for them to celebrate women more. So I definitely, you know, I know they did the Erica Badu with the... Um, with Jill the, Scott, the Jill. yeah. I, Wasn't that, that amazing? That was definitely smooth. Tell me, which one's really, what's, what's been your favorite one so far? That one and Beanie Man. And ah, who did Beanie. Beanie Man go with? Shabba Riggs, right? Yeah, no, no, no. He went with um, Beanie Man went with um, oh my God, was it? It was Bounty, Bounty, Bounty. Bounty. Now that that, was, that, epic. that was epic. I can't even lie. I really love the DMX and Snoop Dogg. That was dope. I love dope. Snoop Dogg so much. Like as just kind of following him throughout the years, and I just love authenticity. He have been the same since day one. Since we first met Snoop Dogg, he have always been the same guy. Mm -hmm. And you have to love him. I mean, Snoop Dogg is probably the only guy who I ever would have wanted to smoke weed with. <laughs> Listen, Snoop, Snoop Dogg makes everything I weird. mean, he makes everything seem like it's okay. Like, hey, you know, <laughs> let's smoke some reefer every now, you know. <laughs> but if I ever smoke some weed, it'll definitely be with Uncle Snoop for sure. <laughs> nah, Snoop Dogg is definitely, he brings the, come on, the people, and that's what I'm saying, these rappers don't even know how to even go back to the, to the source. You got to go mm -hmm. back to the source in order to have longevity. When you know, when you can make, you know, records last a decade, you know, two decades, that means mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. working you know how to make timeless records. And SWV has made timeless records. Mm -hmm. um, we Um, now let's actually jump into, you know, wrapping it up with some of these last questions. I want you to talk to me about your book. I know you actually dropped Ooh. the book. So oh, wait, say that again because the, the, uh, the computer just kind of dis- When I, am I back? Can you hear me good? Yeah, I can hear you good. There's a little delay on your end. Right. Now I was saying, I was saying, um, talk to us about your book. Oh my gosh. Um. I, I released the book last year on my birthday. Mm. Um, it's called I Regret the Day I Lost My Virginity. You Are Not Your Past. Mm. And um, it's just a book that basically chronicles my journey from being a young girl and experiencing being molested and, you know, my first love and just being that stupid young girl for guys and and all of the things that um, I felt as a young girl that helped me, that held me in bondage as an adult. Because once you transition to an adult, you start wishing you could just take some things back and rearrange some things and, and do some things over. And I realized that um, you can't do things over. You don't, sometimes you don't get a second chance to do uh do something you know that you did one time so and i've come to terms with that so i wanted to write a book just to kind of free myself of everything that held me in bondage just growing up and and that book is definitely if you want to know lily as a young girl and why things happen the way it did it'll definitely inspire you to just keep pushing just keep pushing because we don't have a lot of people out here who's going to show us the way. 
sometimes we have to, we go through some things in life and we feel like we want to commit suicide. We don't want to be here anymore. I was there. I was at that point where I didn't want to see people. I didn't give a damn about um, celebrity. I didn't give a damn about fans. I didn't give a damn about my group. I, nothing mattered to me. This industry was like, as long as I just killed myself, I could free myself of all of the bullshit that I had to endure. And then you wake up. Once you don't commit to that, you wake up and realize, why would I have been so selfish? Why would I allow people to control my journey? And that's what we, a lot of us do. A lot of young girls, we depend on boyfriends to tell us how beautiful we are. You got to wake up in the morning and feel that shit. Like, you got to feel beautiful. Don't wait for no, because I'm telling you, people, honey, they will put your ass in a grave. In the grave. And you know what's going to happen? While we're so depressed and sad and ready to kill ourselves, guess what they're doing? They're going on with their lives. They are unbothered by you. You know what I'm saying? So that's what that book is about. And, and I talk about, you know, a lot of things um, that happened in my life where you probably would have thought it would, would have been some of the happier times in my life, but it really was the times that, that was really sad. I, I would always uh, cry a lot, you know? And then once I open the door or once I go to a meet and greet, I'm smiling and I'm putting on the face, but once I get in my room, I'm sad and ready to die, you know? <laughs> so it's just, um, it's my journey. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to it. And it just shows you how to grow from people. Like how to love yourself in spite of everything that's going on around you, everything that's going on around you. Because a lot of times we become consumed with what everybody else is doing. Like I said earlier, we desire to have somebody else's life. Um, jealousy is very prevalent out there right now. You know, when we, there were, there were, there's power in numbers. You know what I mean? Instead of us hating on each other, yo, we can create a dynasty if we just come together and put our heads together and make this shit happen. But why why is it that there is so much division instead of all of us coming together? What is the problem that keeps us separate? Because we always inspire to have somebody else's life. We always want what somebody has. We always want what we don't have. Mm -hmm. And we're not thinking that, wow, if I do this, if I run this play, I can I can get this. If I do it this way, I can have this. No, we want to take it from somebody else or we don't want them to have it, period. Mm. So a lot of this stuff is personal. We have to look into ourselves and look and do a self-evaluation and just be real with ourselves. Like what kind of person am, am I really? Absolutely. You know, a lot of times we 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 put a name on other people. Just because, you know, they telling you the truth. And then so we try to defame them when it's really us. So we mm. get a whole bunch of cheerleaders to come in and, and be on our team. So now we hating on this one person who only said what was the truth. So we hating on them for what? Mm. Instead of accepting what they're saying or trying to figure out like, wow, you know, is there any truth to mm. what was just said to me? You know, so I think, you know, it's just a matter of doing a self-evaluation and realizing, you know, what kind of energy you're putting out there. Mm. I have to do it to myself. I have to say to myself, you know, you a cool chick, but you did some foul shit. You know, so I accepted my punishment. Like, things would just happen to me that's bad. And I'm like, God, I get it now. Like, I get the memo now. Am I done paying for this? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did it to myself. So, I mean. So, now, so I heard you actually made a comment somewhere that says that you are not defined by all the mistakes that you've made. And, you know, and this book was kind of you made all your mistakes and they kind of having a second chance to live life. Oh, yeah. Talk to us about that and just your revelation that you felt when you actually made that statement. Well, you know. Um, when we in life, we do things um, that we really wish we wouldn't have done. We dated people that we wish we shouldn't have dated, that we know we shouldn't have dated. But sometimes certain circumstances have you doing certain things. I talk about everything in this book. I talk about this one time when, 
you know, I was trying to, my mother was about to get put out and I was actually going to go on the street and sell my body. Like it was, this is some real shit. Like mm. I'm not even talking about no superstar. This ain't got shit to do with no superstar, mm. nothing because my life back then was terrible. And mm. that's why I always tell the story whenever I get a chance, because I know I am a witness of how music can definitely save your life. You have to find that one thing that you connect with and, and, and let that be that very thing that take you away from everything that make you feel like wanting to kill yourself. Even sometimes you got to remove yourself from your mom and your dad because sometimes they could be your negative energy. Mm. But you don't have a choice because you don't have a pot to piss in. You're under their roof, but you have to find your space and create that space for you. Sometimes that space may be in the backyard. You bring your radio, you listen to your headphones, look at some, some performances on YouTube, or whatever it is, motivational speaking, whatever that is for you, disconnect yourself to things that are making you feel toxic. I'm mm. telling you, I'm telling you, we see this shit all the time. People are killing themselves, doing retarded stuff, and we looking at them like, okay, what did I miss? What is really going on? Because we're not doing self-evaluations. We're not being honest with each other. Mm -hmm. We're not telling each other the truth. Like, hey, boo, you don't, you going the wrong route. You know what I'm saying? We're not doing that. We're, we're kissing ass. We're doing everything we're not, we're not supposed to do. You know, we're not saving each other. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we talking about each other so bad and we're putting now, it's like, you know, public uh, social media that people get on social media that don't even really like, they never really have a social media account because they know they're going to see somebody's business on there and they get a high from that. Absolutely. You know what I mean? People go so far as taking their own life on social media because people want attention. Well, now, let's bring it back to where we are with the current day. You know, we're, we're, we're I'm not, you know, not to me touch on politics, but you know, in the climate that we are. Oh in, Lord. Right. How do you feel about, you know, just all the racial diversity that's been just happening in our country and the Black Lives Matter and just everything that's just kind of been transpiring over the past six months? Talk to us about that. All right. Well, I'ma just say this. I have to put this disclaimer. I am not a politician. I don't even look at the news because it puts me in a very dark space mm. that I don't choose to be in. I don't want to look at uh, the leader. I don't want to give him any views. <laughs> and um, I just think it sucks. I think things have gotten so bad right now. And I have never been faced with so much like racism and hate. Wait, hold on one little, second, Eddie. My timer is telling me a minute and 54 seconds. OK. I Want to you to continue? Do you want to come back on and finish your statement? That's fine. All right, so let's end the stay, um, end the live now, and I'm gonna jump back on. And just okay. Okay. Everybody, get back in. We here with Miss Lily Lyons. All right, everybody, come in. Okay. What's up, y'all? We back. Uh, we're gonna jump back on with Miss Lily. We having a conversation. She's talking real stuff. Welcome back, y'all. We here for Founders Conversations, and we got the Queen Lily Lyons in the building. Hey. All right, I'm going to get the music down and then we're going to get started. We're going to get Miss Lily back in the building. So let me see where is she We're going to get back in the building. We're going to start it. Welcome, y'all, to Founders Conversations. Listen, if you're not following us, make sure you follow us. We are Lotus Creations Academy and we do this pretty much every Thursday and Saturday if there is no interruptions. This is Founders Conversations. And today we got the queen, Lily Lyons in the building. Um, so we're gonna get her back on here and we're gonna continue the conversation. Um, what's up everybody? We getting Lily back in the building. How y'all feeling though? Conversation was getting real, right? Conversation was definitely getting real. Hey, Mel. By the way, you guys, if you guys have not been tuning in to American Black Film Festival, ABFF, please make sure you guys do that. Um, 
Mel Cherie is actually one of the producers at the film festival. Make sure you guys follow her page at Mel Cherie. Um, and make sure you guys tune into everything ABFF on their website. A lot of dope events. We're going to get Lily back in the building and we're going to get the conversation on and popping. How y'all feeling today? Drop in the comments below. Y'all enjoying the conversation? Hello, please ask her question, her better questions. <laughs> Taj Manny, I will surely ask her better questions, no problem. <laughs> you know, how much better questions you wanna ask her? She's already going on. All right. All right, we're gonna get her back. No worries, Mel. Uh, we're gonna get Lily back. We're getting it situated now. Come on, she's been speaking a lot of real facts, y'all. A lot of real facts. How y'all feeling? We're here for Founders Conversations. Have you guys been following us? If you haven't, make sure you do that. Have you guys been on our website? Actually, have you guys seen my newest project? Make sure you guys follow me at The Only Jersey. Um, and check out my newest project and tag Tony Braxton. Right? Um, but we're going to get started. We're waiting for Miss Lily to be back in the building. Just having a little bit of technical difficulties. And... Then we're gonna get back into the flow of things. Artists go broke and ask about that. How was her relationship with Coco? What did she lessen from her relationship with Ed Lover? Hi everyone, how's your Sunday? Yes, Melanie, how is everybody's Sunday? No, today's not Sunday, today's Saturday. Today is Saturday. <laughs> Um, how's everybody Saturday doing though? How's everybody enjoying quarantine? Oh, all right, so I see Lily in the building. And we're gonna get her back on the live and back into this conversation. Found this conversation. Back. Hey, we back. Yeah. All right, all right. Brief little detour. Instagram times us. They only give you an hour. So, yeah. so I was just like, it didn't even seem like we were on. Can you close that door? Oh, okay. okay. It didn't on, even seem on, like on an hour. Mode right now. Huh? You on grandmommy mode right now? I'm on grandmommy mode right now. <laughs> Listen, but that, that's the beauty and the interesting about quarantine now. You know what I'm saying? Before we get back into the question, I see, I see grand. Grandbaby in the background. Oh. Uh, uh, but you working at the same time. I'm mm -hmm. loving it. It ain't like how it used to be back in the day. No, middle. yeah. You, you got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to. So let's kind of jump back into what we were talking about. We kind of touched on um, just the segregation and, and us kind of growing as a culture and into politics. And, and you know, I just kind of refresh your memory. So, you know, just you want to jump back into that. Well... It really, the, the state of where we are right now, it really breaks my heart. I've always read about racism. I never really experienced it hands on. Okay. It, it just makes me really, it puts me in a very dark place. Um, I really, I just feel for our country and I hope that everything just get to a place where we can exist in the world together because we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. I just think God is really exposing hate, like good and bad. 
you know, he's really exposing bad people. And I'll tell you one thing that made me so happy. What made me happy was that I've been seeing a lot of, you know, with the protesting and the marches and how us as a community, and when I say a community, not just uh, Black people, but just people who are all that are coming together for one cause collectively have really stood their ground unapologetically. Like you have, you know, the white people marching with the black people and the Asian, like everybody who do not believe in this stuff and wish it would go away. People who are not for the hate, people who are not for the racism. I love to see everybody just kind of come together and just stand up to those people who just, they're just so hateful, you know? But I just, I cry out for this country. This country is, we have never been so disrespected. You know, I have friends all over. I have uh, people that I speak to from the Philippines and the UK and they're like, man, what's, they used to have a certain level of respect for the USA and it's, it's just gone. Like they look at us as a joke now. So, which you, you traveled the world, you understand, because you, you were so you know, blessed to do music and travel the world. Mm -hmm. you, you know the reputation that America had. Um, and, you know, and you, you being a part of the industry, and Trump being, I guess, a part of the industry, that's what he really is. He's, a, he's, a, he's an entertainer. You understand that's playing the role of the president at the current moment. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, what are your thoughts on just the division, you know, that he just really created and, you know, if you knew him before, how different he is back then to what he is like now? I don't think he's different. I, I don't look at him as a president. I don't respect him as a president. I mean, I, I don't respect the things that he say as a leader. And, um, I mean, I can't give him a bone. I, I can't because if we had to, if he was just any other guy, if you just kind of take away the presidency from him and he said a lot of the stuff that he said, we wouldn't be his friend. He wouldn't be somebody that we would have dinner with or fellowship with or break bread with. So why do he get a pass? Because he's a billionaire. He shouldn't get a pass. He's a nasty individual. You cannot see all of this hate, all of this killing and, and the things that's been happening to our black men and think it's cool when you just, you know, it's just another day for you. There's no fight for you as a leader, as an individual, he's disgusting. Fuck the presidency. He's a nasty motherfucker. And normally we wouldn't give, we wouldn't have friends like this on a regular day. He would be the guy that your mom would say, Oh, I don't want you hanging out with him. You know, I just don't like his his name on my tongue. I understand. He, he's not worth it to me, and um, I just I just think he sucks. So now, I, I mean, I'm not saying anybody else is better, but I'm sure somebody else is better than him. He's I, just a nasty individual. Absolutely. Now, how? Now, tell me your thoughts on Kamala Harris and her jumping on the Democratic Party with um with Joe Biden. How do you feel about that? I don't have any feelings. Like I applaud anybody who, anybody in our community who make who make history. I'm gonna always applaud that. I don't give a damn about the politics at that point. I have to separate the two because <laughs> you're doing something that a lot of people won't even have an opportunity to do. And and just like I was telling you earlier, like everybody won't be able to get to the mainstream. So when somebody finally reached that plateau of success and you're like, wow, you know, next to one of the highest positions in the world, it we we have to celebrate that. Yeah, of course, sometimes we don't like the decisions everybody make, but my whole thing is we can't hate people all the time because we don't because they don't think the same way we think. You know what I'm saying? If they like warm water, you like hot water. That don't mean you can't be friends. 
Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? If, if you're a Christian and they're Buddhist, that don't mean you can't be friends. That's just not a comfortable conversation to have, which, which it should be. We need to be comfortable talking about uncomfortable shit. And until we get to that point, it's ne nothing is never going to grow. It's going to be hate everywhere. We have to learn how to agree to disagree. Like, you know, because there's a reason why people believe in what they believe. And now it's, it's time out for believing in shit just because that's what we were taught. Yeah, that worked when we were kids. You know, but now, you know, as adults, we really have to choose our candidates based on what who falls in line better with our lifestyle. You know what I mean? Everybody talking about, you know, they hate Obama because he, you know, uh, support the LGBTQ and he's supposed to. He's everybody's president. He ain't just one group of people presidents. They deserve God, too. They deserve rights, too. Like, I mean, how selfish is that shit? You know what I'm saying? So I have family members who want, who need um, assistance from the government. Shit, I will vote for that alone because I, want, I, I feel like they deserve that. Everybody don't abuse the system. Some, it's just hard as hell right now for a lot of people. So I think if it don't fall in line with what you believe and what your life is like, then leave it the fuck alone. Like, don't even waste your time just and energy giving it that much airtime because you could be focusing on shit that, that, that falls in line with how you want to live. Mm -hmm. We too consumed with other people's shit, like I told you earlier, to the point where we don't even know what we want for our own life. So do you think that we're at a crossroads now, just collectively, because I... I Everyone's changing paths. You know, like look look at how we're communicating right now. You understand, like you said. And in, in the next few months, it's either it's gonna continue to evolve and continue to change. Like the music industry, like the entertainment industry, Hollywood is shut down right now. So you know, with with the election just kind of moving, the election is almost like the next reality show. It don't feel like that. You know, it's almost like you watch it don't feel like that too. Yes. It, it, it feels like a, a a, a reality show and a bad fucking horror movie. <laughs> Shit. I be feeling like Jason is going to show up back one of these two bitches. I mean, it's just, I, I swear, I just don't like to watch it. It, it. And I know I have to, my sister always tell me, like, you just have to be in the know. You have to know what's going on, but it, it makes me angry. And it consumes so much of me. And I don't want to feel like that. Like, I don't want to not like people. I don't want to hate. I don't want to see people's comments. And, uh -huh. Because it's a sensitive space right now. Mm -hmm. It's very sensitive for all of us. And, like, every this, this election right here is like, whew. I mean, it almost feel like if things don't go a certain way, we gonna be it's gonna be Armageddon out this bitch, you know? <laughs> Literally. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, Africa, I'm sorry. Africa. I'm a, I'm a, that's that's probably my one bad vice is I'll just be cussing. I'm I'm Jesus okay. Lord. I'm sorry. It is founders conversation and it, it, it's a platform just to educate, but we being real here, Lily, and it's so it's so you like you just like family on here, so it's like right. thank you so much. No worries. So you know, like kind of following into just what quarantine is, and just kind of building, you know, your, your audience in music, right? Or keeping your audience in music because mm -hmm. you have to build your audience in music. What are some tips that you can give to people to kind of be like making your music stay around for generation and generation to kind of you know help? What are some tips that you guys can give? Well, the beauty of recordings is that you really don't have to do anything. Hmm. And so she made it because recordings, it, it's a recording. You know, you hear it all the time, yeah. you know. And I think, you know, SWV have been blessed to a point where we have put out some great music and we've had a lot of success. Like, you know, they play weak all the time. They play I'm So Into You right here. And especially now that people are home, like I've heard our records more than ever. And I'm so appreciative because like I said, people have a choice. Even, even in radio, you know, um, 
they have a choice of who they want to play. So I'm glad that just putting on the SWE record will make you happy or sometimes it, it make you sad because you remember this this loser guy you was dating when we came out, you know? <laughs> so you either going to hate the record or you going to love them, you know? But regardless of what, it still puts you in a place where you can, it was a part of your journey one, one way or another. So um, I just say just just keep connecting with, with your fans and, and your supporters and and just speak to them. Now we have a platform where we can do do this right here. Like sometimes I'll just go live. I want to know, I want to come into your world because we can't do this like when we're working a lot. So we're, um, we're more accessible than anything right now. You know? yeah, right and now. you realize, I know I realized during this quarantine how, how much we don't sit down somewhere. Like Sometimes we just need to sit our ass down somewhere. We moving too much. We 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 going nowhere fast. Mm -hmm. And I realized that. And I'm like, damn, you know, you mean I, I appreciate my home. I've never been home so long in my life. Mm -hmm. To the point where I would see the front door, the garage, and my bedroom. I never even noticed other parts of my house because I'm just packing, unpacking going to sleep, getting up, getting on a flight. And that's how crazy our lives can be sometimes. But it makes you appreciate washing the dishes now. It makes you appreciate uh, just sitting down in, in your movie room, just reflecting on all the great things that, that God has done in your life. And that's what I've been doing. Like, I, I just tried to turn everything around. This pandemic has really putting a lot of my friends um, in a very awkward position. You know, a lot of they, everybody's losing stuff. You know, jobs are not available. People lost their jobs. And even in this time, we still have to not only focus on the things that we don't have right now, because at one time we did have it. And one thing I know about God, if he bless you one time, he'll bless you again. Absolutely. So I've taken this time to really focus on the things that I'm blessed. Like, even with my grandbaby who drives me crazy, she's six years old, and thank God for her. But I appreciate her so much. Mm -hmm. I'm not wanting for anything. I'm not needing for anything. My bills are paid. Come on. like, huh? And even the people that are really complaining, every time I, I be talking to one of my girlfriends on the phone, she's like, well, I'm just going through this. I'm going through that or whatever. I said, but you still, I still see your lights on <laughs> and you talking to me on a cell phone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we don't look at, because we're so used to our lives and we don't think, they don't, we don't look at a, a cell phone as a luxury. I'm like, dude, you're on a cell phone. So you, that means you're able to pay that bill. Mm. So we got to focus on the great things that we have. I, the little thing, when we open our refrigerator and we see a loaf of damn bread, that's a reason to be excited. Because some people, they have a total different story. I hear people talk to me sometimes and they're like, oh, I'm just going through. Because I can tell when my friends are going through. Or just people in general. Like, they'll hit me up in my DM and be like, Oh, can I talk to you? You know, a lot of the young kids, they, they say, auntie. I don't, I don't even know half of them. You know what I mean? But they're like, auntie. And I'm like, okay, what, what's the matter? You know, so I just feel like I have to, like, sow something into their spirit. And they tell me their problems. I'm like, well, damn, that's it. Hmm. That's, that's the only problem you have? <laughs> well, how about this? How about we switch problems? Literally, how about we switch we problems? We are not thankful enough like we have to be appreciative for the little things man because it's clear that the big shit can be taken away from us and this this world has showed us especially in my field that um the world can really exist without entertainers without singers without performances i was that that offended me <laughs> wait you know what it it, 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 it can't exist without it because we still have the content before that we are still surviving and thriving. Right, right, right. So right. it's, we love, listen, we, I don't even listen to nothing new no more. I, I turn on SWV, I turn on Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. I turn on Prince, I, turn, mm -hmm. I listen to 
classics because those are what sustain through a lifetime, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what we're still thriving off of. We need to bring music back to when the next hundred years come that this music is still gonna stick around. You understand? Can, can I just can I just shout somebody out real quick? Yes, go ahead. And I, I see her in the comments and I don't usually look at them, but this my sister be like, you need to look at what people are saying. I'm like, oh, well, how can I think about what I'm gonna say if I'm focused on? So I, I have to give a shout out to one of my favorite artists of all time, Miss Melba Moore. And what, what she don't know, when we talk about inspiration, and, and this is a, a very um, a, a great time to really say this, Melba Moore had a song out called The Other Side of the Rainbow. Okay. And I want to encourage everybody on this live, if you're ever feeling down, or uninspired, please go listen to this song. And it, it's it's the best. I mean, I, I learned about this song in middle school. And, you know, I was, like I said, getting back to the book, I was being molested. I, a whole bunch of shit was happening to me back then. But this this song really inspired me to follow my dreams. It's a dream chaser kind of material it's a dream chaser song so you know it just says if you don't follow your dreams you'll never know what's on the other side of the rainbow you never know what's on the other side of the mountain and your journey's in you know like you if you don't put your best foot forward you will never know what's on the other side of the mountain and you can't find out by following somebody else's and, and wanting somebody else's life mm -hmm. So I want to encourage y'all. That song might be on YouTube. It, I know it's on YouTube because I I, I looked at it, looked it up the other day, but I don't know if it's on iTunes. But I want everybody to download that record. It's by <laughs> Melba Moore and it's called "The Other Side of the Rainbow." If you want some inspiration, this is is close. This is to me. This is our version of a gospel record. That's the kind of inspiration that that helped me throughout my years. So I want to. Give that shout out and give that love. Right and, and give my, my girl Melba Moore her flowers while she's alive because she's amazing. And it pisses me off how we just totally forget about the people who were here before us. But I'm going to create my own platform where I, I am going to allow artists that I love to mm -hmm. tell their story and just have fun telling it because Melva and I, I've, I've followed her journey and we've experienced a lot of the same pain and a lot of the same hurt. And look, she's amazing. She's amazing. So Miss Melva, I just want to tell you, you're amazing and we love you and you definitely are not forgotten. You are one of the best voices that I have ever heard. And I will continue to support you as well as all the other artists who inspired me because it's just it's so crazy how when i hear younger artists today they don't know nothing i'm like you don't know this person <laughs> are you do you know this person is doing this because of this person so i just wanted to put that out there <laughs> yeah how important is it just doing your research right some people don't even know who whitney houston is they don't know nothing they don't know they don't know nothing i wouldn't even put out an artist unless they know certain people because you have to be able to have these conversations you have to period now have you been watching have you been keeping up with what's going on in entertainment um, um just a little bit i i just uh i've been watching here and there or i'm around people who talk about it so, you know well, uh, Meg Thee Stallion actually just came out and said that Tory Lane shot her. So she actually confirmed that. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on that? It just, just stands on just black women not being protected out here. That was basically her message. So that's what led to hear what Nene got to say. Well, I, I, one thing I have to say is that I don't know what happened in that car. But it just reminds me of the young girl that I used to be, that I write about in my book. We choose a lot of the wrong dudes. We give our space and our time to people that don't really deserve it. And that's all I can say. Like he clearly, if he feel the need to have to shoot a young lady, come on now. Like, 
I mean, it it pretty much speaks for itself. Like you you don't get no. I mean, that's coward behavior. And I hate to say that, but I mean, it, it's true. It's, like, it's no girl. No girl is no threat to you. Absolutely. Like, what do you, you got a whole bodyguard in the car? What, what is he doing? Just sitting there? That This is what I'm saying with these artists. They don't even know how to really be artists and protect themselves from, that stuff should have never happened. You always need somebody around you that's going to say, yo, what the hell are you doing? Or you remove him from that situation. Or you remove the young lady from the situation. A lot of these security guys, I'm telling you, they just be friends. They don't know what the hell they doing. They, it's a check. You know? So I am just happy that she's okay and that she's, um, she's telling her side of the story. Like I said, I don't know what the hell happened in that car. But I don't give a damn what conversation took place. She didn't deserve to get shot. I'm sorry. Absolutely. But I'm glad it wasn't worse, you know? She chose not to come out and say anything because she wanted to you know, protect him and spare him, is what she said. Um, how do you feel about just black women, you know, again, sparing the men that they feel like don't spare you guys? Well, first of all, I'm not going to be with no dude that I even think is going to shoot me. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm not even going to be with somebody like that. And I've, I've, I've done some dumb shit in my younger days, and I've dated some really stupid guys, but I've learned those lessons young. And, and Megan is young. She's a beautiful girl. I always get a resemblance like everybody was like oh you, you could be megan's big sister or whatever i think she's a beautiful girl i, I love what she's doing huh i see it low-key yeah they like i'm a savage yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm a savage too girl i'm a savage too but you know I, i'm just happy she's okay and I, I you know she's successful now she's doing a thing there are some nice men who would love to date her but I think, you know, she just have to put herself in a company of guys that's going to appreciate her, period. And that's, and that's all I really have to say about that. You know, I mean, I don't know what transpired in that car. But um, when I'm going to try to protect you when I'm dying, oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Like, we all have to be accountable here. And I think a, a lot of guys, they don't want to be held accountable for the shit they do. You can't blame somebody now. You can't blame the white man now because, you know, you the one pulled the trigger. Absolutely. So now, there's something called cancel culture. So, you know, now it's like Tory Lanez is canceled because this is what's going down. How do you feel about cancel culture? Everybody's been canceled from Legends to from Cosby to R. Kelly to it just go. Mick Cannon was canceled and uncanceled. You know, it just, the, the list, it just goes down the list. What's your thoughts on cancel culture? Well, sometimes I think it's unfair because we are living in a day where if you say something that somebody don't agree with, they will cancel you. Mm -hmm. It could be your experience. They don't give a damn. Mm -hmm. If they don't agree with what you're saying, you're canceled. I don't think that's fair. Like You have way too much control over my life. Mm. Like you have control over whether I can feed my grandbaby or not like that because of something that I believe in. And so that's why, you know, sometimes you just have to just shut the hell up and just keep your feelings to yourself and just keep certain things to yourself because people are very sensitive today. They're easily offended. And, you know, every conversation is not for everybody. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, just because we don't agree with each other, and that means that I can't eat, I can't feed my family. Like, you going to pull this whole fucking event against me because of something that I, that I did as a human? So I think just as artists and, and people of, of a certain level of influence, people dehumanize us, which is so wrong. Like, we do some crazy shit, too. We're human. We're human. Or, or put us in time out for a minute. I, I could see that. Put us in time out because sometimes we just be off the chain 
you know, we think our shit don't stink. We do stuff and we feel like we bigger than the world. And and those kind of people, yeah, they need to be in timeout. But I think sometimes it just goes a little bit too far based on um, what somebody think and if their their feelings or emotions don't fall in line with what we're feeling at the at that time. I don't feel like that's right. It don't happen to people in, in real life. It shouldn't happen to us either. We can't control what happens on your job. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That's for your boss to decide. But when you're in the business of people, hey, man, that's what happens. You know, in, in a certain way, your supporters are, are your supporters. Like, they, they bossing up now, you know? <laughs> So we have to be accountable. We have to be accountable and and just try to explain things the best way we can without offending. But it's nothing you can really do to if people don't agree with you, they just don't. But let's just agree to disagree. Don't cancel me. Don't stop my my movement. You know, I have a whole family. These people got families and you know, they are endorsed by certain people, but then there's a certain level of accountability. If we do crazy shit, we got to be accountable for that. Absolutely. And that's why you hear a lot of people apologize because sometimes we just get beside ourselves as artists and we need to shut the hell up. Absolutely, I agree. You know, but um, we just need to respect people for who they are. Absolutely. So, you did the reality show. We didn't get a chance to really touch on that, but I know you did a reality show with your sister. Mm -hmm. um, and I would like to know the, the back end of it and how toxic that could be. Uh, because, you know, we just saw on the news, you know, again, you know, with Miss Tamar Braxton, your fellow R&B, you know, sister, to, you know. Um, she, you know, literally almost committed suicide because of all the back and end and back and forth with, with the network. Um, talk to us about how toxic reality TV can be to your family environment and to your mental being. Well, I don't know if I could really blame it on reality TV. Now, they do. Reality TV is definitely not for everybody. It's not for everybody, but we know what we're signing up for. And this, I don't know her situation at all. Um, I, and I didn't even care at that moment. I was just more concerned about her well-being. Because, you know, when something like that happened, I've been in that space. And I, I told you that earlier where I wanted to end my own life. So I cried out for her. Like, I really felt bad about everything that was going on. And I think when it gets to that point, it's not just one thing. Usually it's, it's just a combination of a lot of things and you're just tired. You get tired of fighting. You get tired of just people not listening to you. You just get tired of being sick and tired. And I think that was the space that she was in at that time. And um, sometimes people around you can make you sick too. And, and I know that was my case. I don't know about her situation, but people around me made me literally sick. You know, um, one thing I know about reality TV, if you don't control your own narrative, they're going to create one, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of times it's a reason why they approach certain people to do reality television. Now, you don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking all reality TV, but you just have some who believe that our community just like messy shit. You know why? Because we don't support the good shit. But we want to march and we want to, you know, protest and do all of these, um, what do you call it, when they, petitions. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like, yeah. I remember one petition where the, one of the rapper guys, I, God bless the dead, I think he passed away. He had, he wanted to do a show. He was a father of 13 kids. And everybody signed this petition to not make that happen. Well, um, in my community, I know a dude with 13. We don't want to face the reality. That's not who, that's not everybody's story. And that's not the bulk of who we are. Well, shit, we have uncles that got 13 damn kids. <laughs> so, okay, one of the one of the people said it was Shorty Lowe. Um, God bless him. And 
I think I don't always look at that as a negative thing. Okay, he got 13 kids, but how many baby mothers? But to see a black man, we don't know how that show could have turned out. We just so focused on it. Oh, the black guy got 13 kids and we don't want that image out. No, but that's somebody's story. It may not be yours. If it's not yours, then go like some shit you like. Mm -hmm. You don't have to support it, but don't make it bad for he could have went on there and show how he take care of his kids and and inspired a whole community of black fathers who are deadbeats. Mm -hmm. See, we don't look at that side of things. Because you the kids are not going anywhere. The kids are here. You know what I mean? But we don't know what he what he wanted to show us. We we don't know if he was celebrating the fact that he had all of these different baby mothers. No, that, that probably wasn't even the meat of the story. But I would have loved to see how he handled all them damn kids and fathered all of those kids. That would have been motivating for me to see. I, so, got, I got two kids and they father ain't shit. So, so would you get into actually creating? You've been doing reality TV for some years now. Would yeah. You Want to start creating some of these stories? Oh that's yeah, that's that's what story. that's what that's what I've been doing. I I I, yeah. I love it. Um, I just feel like at this point in my life, it's not always about it's not about being in front of the camera, but just creating opportunities for people that are good. You know, like I started a podcast called The Powder. Make sure you guys follow the Powder Room underscore podcast. And we're gonna um, be launching soon, so I just wanted to create a space for. What's it? What's I'm gonna write it into the comments, and I'm gonna pin it. The Powder Room Podcast. The no. Powder Room underscore Podcast. Okay. Somebody said my baby's daddy ain't shit either, honey. Ooh, the life we live ain't that right, boo boo. Uh, <laughs> underscore Podcast. Yep. And it's spelled the same way it's said. Yeah, right? the Powder Room underscore podcast. Okay. And you know, I, I just never saw like um, a space for women that are, you know, 35 and up. It's really for every woman. But sometimes we work so hard and we just take everything so serious sometimes. So it's that moment. 30 minutes to an hour, we're going to talk some shit. We're going to have fun. We're just going to be a, be young again and just talk mm -hmm. about everything that make us uncomfortable. It could be anything. We talk about, uh, now it's, it's not for kids, that's for sure, because we a whole grown <laughs> women. And it's not, I have to put that out there. Okay. You know, so it's an adult kind of commentary type thing so i mean you the, what you get here is what you're gonna get there and then some see i'm trying to be <laughs> saved right now a little bit okay. the, the kick me out of the church so far i don't I done no. a little few bombs out there but you it's know what it's just a place where we can just come together as older women and just have fun and have some conversation and that's it you know with with so much going on in our lives and we just there's never a moment where we can have for ourselves. You know, we're always with the plus ones of our lives, like the kids and the husband and the brothers, the mothers, and our everyday life become consumed with what they're doing. Instead of just focusing on us, we want to be able to just get our work done and just listen to the Powder Room podcast and just, you know, just have fun as women. And then after that hour, then we go back to, to being serious. You know what I mean? Wait, so we, talk about the podcast. So who's on the show with you? Well, my girl, Nick, the real Nikki Nicole underscore zero, the real Nikki, the real underscore Nikki Nicole zero eight. Okay. And you guys saw her on Candy Cody Nights. And we have uh, a young lady by the name of Shay Styles. Okay. And she was on this reality show called... Um, Oh my God, it's a dating show. I cannot remember that damn. Okay, they said the link is not showing up. The, it's the Powder Room underscore podcast. The Powder Room. Oh, I spelled it wrong. I'm going I'm to refix it. Gonna See, we're we going to cut you. Oh, uh, my bad. My bad. Era the Powder Room.
Oh yeah, yeah. They they help. See, one thing about these online people, they be child. They will help you out. It's called ready to love. She, yeah, one of our um, one of our hosts was on that show, so she had her own experience, you know, with reality television, and she also I, owns this really I'm nice. A, I'm a tag it at um, Marguzies. I'm trying to think of That's it, right? Yeah, that's um, it. And so, um, yeah, it's just that moment where you just want to just not be so serious. Sometimes we want to. It's kind of like girls' trip meets. Um, Oh my God! I had it down the other day. Uh, it's just fun. Like if you can imagine girls trip in a podcast, that's exactly what it is. Because we talk about dudes, we talk about everything that's going on, and in a fun way. You know, we we're adults, so. Um, Are y'all gonna have different guests coming on? Yeah, like we we have stuff? we have a few guests so far. But with this quarantine thing right now, we've been shooting at a at a location. But um, you know, it's it's just one of them things where you just it's it's just fun. That's that's all I want to say. I don't want to say too much, and I don't want to say too little. But I just know if you like some good shit talking and you like to have a good time, this is definitely the place where you want to be for 30 minutes to an hour to kind of take you away from everything that's going on serious in your life. Because we all have careers as women. You know, we don't talk about those conversations that are uncomfortable. You know, we want everything to be cool. But sometimes, you know, in a powder room, we're going to take you there. First of all, have you done radio before or no? Huh? Have you done radio? I never done radio, but I've always loved radio. That's why everybody always you talk talks. like you talk like you were just meant to do. <laughs> but but you but I've been doing it for thirty years, you know. <laughs> like yeah. drop in the comments below if y'all think Lily should definitely do radio. Oh she... my god! Well, shoot, I ain't gonna give up no other job now, you know. <laughs> so and you know that's one of the reasons why I I started the podcast because everybody was like, you need to do radio, you need to do radio, but see me. I, I don't want to be filtered. Like, I just want to say what I want to say and just, I don't know, that's the way I, I, I just communicate in a certain way. So I just want people to have fun. Just come into the space and have a good time in the room and, so and no, we just be... Fellas are, not allowed, fellas are not allowed to come by? Fellas can come by, but beware, because we're going to get in your ass. Okay. <laughs> that's right. Oh. We, we, oh, we talking shit about y'all now. But we, we also talk about ourselves. We we put ourselves in the hot seat too, sometimes. Oh, but honey, but see in the powder room, we all well, women stick together, honey. Okay, all right. So That's be so beware. So woman so it's woman empowerment. So where where could we when could we look out for it and where can we um could be prepared to watch that? Well we're trying to find a um a release date now. Uh, we I think we are like six to eight episodes in already so we're getting together like the the trailer and everything and we're gonna put it out there soon so that's why i want everybody to follow us right now so we can build the momentum because when i put this shit on my page I, it's gonna go crazy so and i know y'all be talking all this crap i needed to be right so you know i'm telling y'all about it i'm putting it out in the universe it's happening it's gonna happen and we're going to put it out there shortly. But um, I want y'all to come and support your girl. Yes, we'll definitely be there whenever you're ready to launch it. I have another show I do called Black Culture, The Breakdown. It's more of like a late night show. Um, and that's done on Sundays. And you can come, definitely come on there with the girls and talk, talk to the audience a little bit. Oh, wow. Wow, of course. That's awesome. And also, I want to say, um, let them know where to get, to get the book. If you all... Like anything that I've said, we've been on this for an hour and a half, almost yeah. two hours, and it's been great. It's been awesome. I, I just want to commend you because you asked very good questions. <laughs> I hate a <laughs> boy. You don't understand. Like I, I can kind of tell you, you kind of did your homework a little bit. You, you, you yeah. came prepared. So I, I want to applaud you for that. Because uh, it's nothing like a boring-ass interview. <laughs> 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 
And also, I want to plug, um, well, let me plug my book first. You can get my book, I Regret the Day I Lost My Virginity, You're Not Your Past. It's in a Kindle version on Amazon.com. Would love to have you guys support. I'm actually working on a um, a compilation erotica book. This is going to be a um, this is going to be an audio book. So I'm going to be talking real sexy and stuff. And um, it's called "The Many Faces of Sister Hot Pussy." Okay. All right. So, and this is what the damn coronavirus got us being creative and stuff. But, you know, Sister Hot Pussy, I don't know if you ever heard me say her name before, but she's definitely every woman's alter ego. She is the woman that um, every man loves, but every woman is ashamed to be. But this book is going to show you all the faces of Sister Hot Pussy. You know, like she's your teacher. She's your first lady. She's your mom. <laughs> okay. So these stories, like my brain have been in overload trying to put this out there. And then I have an inspirational one that I'm going to do called You Are Enough. And this book is definitely different from any book I've ever written. As you can see, I've, I've, I've become an author now. And yeah. I just love writing because I feel like writing really put things in perspective. And it, it kind of clears you from being so cloudy. I never would imagine that so many people would be reading my book. And then when I see them in public and they're like, well this chapter and they want to elaborate on certain things and i'm like wow like i don't take that lightly i love when people support me you know but um this one you are enough is definitely um an inspirational book and it's just telling women that just because you're not married you are still enough just because you don't have kids yet you are still enough just because you haven't achieved a certain level of success in that at in life you are still enough so it's so many different things you know i decided at my age now i wanted to kind of be everything that i wanted to be whatever that was you know it's bad enough the industry put you in this box they make you what you what they want you to be but lily is going to be who the hell she want to be if one day I want to be an author. I'll be an author. If I want to be a singer the next day, I'm going to be a singer. If I want to go to school and be a fucking pilot, that's what I'm going to do because I have one life to live and I'm going to make this shit count. So I, I want you guys to do the same thing. Live your life and do not live your life for people. Period. <laughs> My grandbaby say that. What she say on period. <laughs> on period. My grandma like on period. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <sighs> Thomas is saying you are enough, pal. Somebody said exactly. Somebody said I am still enough. Yes, that's right. Uh, um, you know, so there's a lot of positivity seeping through. Uh, so you know, we appreciate you coming on. Maybe anything else you want to plug before we wrap it up today, Miss? Lions. No, I just want to thank you for your time. And I'm just happy that I had some time to really give you all the time that I have given you. I, I love, I've been looking at the comments. I, I, I appreciate everybody who stayed in to watch. Um, and also, I have to plug, make sure you guys follow um, Taj's page. Uh, she's Taj George on Instagram, Facebook, and catch up on everything that she's doing also coco has you know if you've been following coco coco loved the puppies so she has um a puppy boutique called the coco pups boutique so make sure you guys if you have animals if you have little puppies who like to be cute and fly and i have a grand puppy myself and her name is justice and we my daughter bought her during all this whole um this craziness that's going on in our world today. And so she's a biracial puppy because she represents black and white okay. and she's colorblind. So we call her justice because of everything that's going on today. So um, we keep her cute in her little Coco Pups boutique gear. So I have to plug that because I actually love the stuff. So, okay. 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 
All right. Oh, word on the street is right now they just announced it. The next versus battle is Brandy versus Monica. They just dropped it. Get the out of here. <laughs> they just dropped it. So this is going to be actually real interesting. Oh, What's yeah. On? That's definitely going to break the internet. But <laughs> that's definitely going to break the internet. I'm excited uh, about that. That This is good. I think it's good for the culture. You know what I mean? Like, people, everybody like a good, some good competition, some uh, friendly competition. Even we uh, know that, you know, they're, they're really good friends, and, and they're both good sports. They're great at what they do, and shit, I'm going to be for it all, honey. I'm going to be in there. <laughs> well, I definitely you see you in the comments then. Uh, for versus Brandy versus Monica. I guess we got to stay tuned for all the details. But thank you so much for coming on the Founders Conversation, Lily Lyons. Thank you. Are, you. you are iconic. We love SWV. Thank and you we- so much. <laughs> and make sure you guys follow um, the SWV page on Facebook and keep up with everything that we're doing. We love you guys. We thank you so much for your support. And Hey, y'all, y'all better keep us around for a long time. Like, don't be expired. Don't put no expiration date on us. You hear? Yeah. <laughs> there is no expiration. Your music is timeless and it will live on forever. Lee. Thank you so much, guys. Love you guys. Thank you for having me. No worries. All right, boo boo. All right, y'all. So that was Lily Lyons, y'all, for Founders Conversation. Thank y'all so much for tuning in with your boy Jersey. Please make sure y'all follow me at The Only Jersey. We do this every Thursday and Saturday. Founders Conversations. And we bring in different people that are professionals in their fields, such as Lee Lyons. Check out Nigel Barker if you haven't. Also, check out D. Woods, Tavis Styles, so many other professionals that we've had. Please make sure you guys get into it. And see you guys next time. My name is Jersey, and I'm signing off. Have a good day, you guys. <laughs>